Okay, to tie the lamb shoulder, we've already boned it out, we've batted it out, we've got it to the shape and size that we want. Um, when you come to tie things, we always tie it from the middle and work our way out. That's going to give us the chance to actually um, keep the knots nice and even and keep the meat nice and even rather than having thick bits and thin bits all over everywhere where you're tying it. Uh, the general rule is that you start from the middle and work out. However, um, if you're putting a stuffing into the lamp or whatever meat it is that you're doing, you'll still put a piece of string in the middle to start with and then we'll just put a, a loop around each end. Okay, why do you think we might need to do that? Excellent, yeah, because if you if you carry on tying from the middle and there's a stuff in it, all you're going to do is squeeze the stuffing out at the end. So if there's no stuffing in it, like this one, we're just going to tie from here, but if there is a stuffing in it, you need to put the first one in the middle and then just put one round each end to hold the stuffing in while you then continue to tie it. So when we're tying it, we're going to use a slip knot. Now, I've got the string here in a pot. I'm actually going to put the pot down onto the bottom of the bench um, rather than having it up here because the string will all get tangled up, we'll end up cutting the wrong piece or, or whatever. Um, in a butcher's shop, the string would probably be, if ever you go into a butcher's shop, you'll see the string is probably up on a meat hook up high um, where the butcher can actually reach it. The string's coming down, he can tie from there. But once again, it's not all over the board, um, it's there. So I'm going to put this down here so that I've got a full length of string coming to here. And the first step when you come to tie something, as I said, we're going to start from the middle, is I'm going to use my thumbs. I'm going to pull the string tight and I'm going to use my thumbs to actually bring the string through to the middle. Okay? Now, this is where the technique comes in. Are any of you left-handed? If any of you are left-handed, then you would do the opposite to what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use my left hand, but for this, if you're left-handed, you'd use your right, and you would do everything the opposite. Okay? So with my left hand, I'm going to get what we call, it sounds a bit silly, but the gun fingers. Okay? So, it's easy to remember, that's why we say that. So I've got a piece of string coming out under there, and the string closest to me that goes to the pot down on the bottom of the bench, I'm going to loop underneath there. Okay? With this piece of string, I'm going to bring it over, I'm going to go over the top of the first finger and down in between the two. Okay? So I'm going to come over and down. Okay? That's why I've got the two fingers for the gun, not just the one. Okay? Then, with the trigger, I'm going to put it onto that piece of string very important all right so bring it down grabbing that and I'm going to turn my hand over clockwise if you were left-handed and doing this with your right hand you would turn your hand anti-clockwise okay so now I've got this piece of string that I'm going to loop through there and pull to form a loop that goes around this piece of string that goes to the pot on the floor okay what I don't want you to do is to actually, and we'll get back to that position, what I don't want to do is go around both of those pieces of string. Okay? The knot won't work properly, it won't hold its uh, tight knot when you do it up if you've gone around both pieces. So I'm going to come over, thumb on, turn my hand over clockwise, round and through the first loop. So that I've got that loop, this piece of string passes all the way through here. All right? What's it important to do is to pull this loop very, very tight. Yeah? If you don't, again, if you don't pull that loop tight, when you tighten the, the knot up to the meat, it's going to slip back open again and you're not going to get a nice tight knot holding the meat. So what I'm going to do now, very simply, I'm going to hold the piece of string that goes to the pot, I'm going to push the knot with my thumb and pull on this piece of string until it pinches and tightens in. Okay? I'm not going to go too tight and try and rip the piece of uh, stuff in half. Okay, but that leaves me, I'll turn that over so the camera can see, that leaves me with a piece of string there. Now, this string could easily come open. If I grab the small piece of string and pull it, that's going to pull the knot the, the other way, it's going to come loose again. So, just tighten that. What I want to do is actually make sure it can't do that, and the thing to do is to actually tie another knot in there. Now, you can stand there and just tie another knot in it, there's nothing wrong with that, but when you're doing hundreds of these knots and tying up lots of meat, it's a lot easier to actually get a bit of a system. And if with your left hand, uh, you get your finger and thumb like that, and with the long piece of string, go over, under and over, I can use my finger and thumb as a pair of pincers to grab that little bit of string. Okay. Now, 
Am I going to pull the small piece of string or the long piece of string to tighten it? The long piece. Why is that? Because the small one loosen the Because the small one will loosen it. So hold the small piece of string full and tighten your knot, pulling the long one. Okay? That is going to hold your meat uh, nice and tight and then we can just snip off and start again. I'm going to do this two or three times so that you can see. All right, and then we're going to go around the room and you guys are going to tell me what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a gap for about two centimetres or so and tie another one there and then I'm going to go here and there and there and work my way out. If I was stuffing it, where would I tighten it? Yeah, do the ends first. Excellent. So, sliding that back underneath, I'm going to give myself a couple of centimetres gap. Okay, once again, I've got my gun fingers with this string coming on here. Okay, I'm going to loop the string over over the first finger and down. I'm not holding on to it, it's just hanging. With my thumb, I'm gonna put it on the top and I'm gonna turn over my hand, okay? Am I gonna go over or under that piece of string? Over, excellent. If you go under, you might think it'll work, but the way the knot is, it, it won't tighten properly. You must go over. So I'm gonna go over, under, and through. So once again, I've formed that loop around there, okay? which I need to pull really tightly. Very, very important that you pull that tight. Now, I can tighten that up, and I'm gonna pull that string so that it holds it to about the same sort of thickness as the first one. Okay, it's gonna tighten up as we go further along. Who can remember what it was that we did to get this next knot? Get your finger on your thumb. Finger yeah. and thumb. And then loop it twice. Over, under, and over. Excellent, that's the thing. Grab that piece of string, pull in the long one or the short one? Pull the long one to the side, okay, and that tightens off. Okay? And that is how you do a slip knot. So I shall just do a few more. I'll do one more and then you guys are gonna tell me what I'm gonna do. So over, under, through, round, and when you've been doing it for years, you'll get quite quick at it. Okay? What I would concentrate on at the minute is getting it right. So Luke, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Um, a couple of centimetres along the So, yeah, okay. Remember you two thumbs, keep the string tight, pull it under, through there. What am I going to do first? Uh, Dumb fingers on the bottom there. Dumb fingers on, stop there. Bethan, what am I going to do next? Grab the piece that's been cut over the knee yep. and between the fingers. Okay, which way? Over that one or under that one? Over the first. Over, over the first the and down. Excellent. So over the first and down. Okay, and then what am I going to do with my thumb? Pinch the two bits of string. Excellent. And then Stop there. Brooke? Push it around clockwise. Clockwise. Excellent. Put the string over and just tie it around the first one. Just around the first one. Excellent. Good. Now what am I going to do, Camille? Um, yeah. Tie the string. Yeah. yeah. Which bit? Which bit am I going to pull? These two? No. No. That. One. Excellent. That one. Make sure you pull that one because yeah. we want that knot really tight. <coughs> okay, so lining it up so we've got a couple of seconds gap, uh, a couple of um, centimetre gap. Uh, what am I going to do now, Amy? Uh, pull the, push the knot. Yeah. Until how far? Till it's tight. Till it's tight. Excellent. We don't want any air pockets in this piece of meat as we're doing it. Okay. If we've got air pockets in there, this is going to braise for about two hours in the oven or pot roast. Yeah? If you've got air pockets in there, the idea of tying isn't just so it looks nice. If you've got air pockets in there, when you take it out, take the string off and come to carve it, because there's air pockets in it, it will crumble as you carve it. You want it to hold the shape. So it's very important that we tie it tight. It does look nice, but the idea isn't for it to look good because you're not going to serve it with the string on. The idea is for it to get rid of any air pockets. It will be easier on your synoptic when you've got a stuffing in there because that's going to help fill in the air pockets as well. All right. So, uh, Ellie, we're down to you. What am I doing now? I want to tie the string yeah. so that you can come down so you get the big string.